So these are all reeds that are almost done. They basically look like a reed. They don't quite sound like a reed yet. I'll try to start with this one. So it's still way too resistant to play on. But as you can see, there's a tip to it, there's a spine, there's a back, there's a heart. And right now, the crow's really flat and it's very hard. But actually, all I really need to do with this reed is scrape more off the tip. Basically, to start this reed, I made three different sections on it, the tip, the heart, and the back. And then I made the tip basically thin enough to look like a tip. And then the heart and the back are basically completely scraped out. But the only thing left to scrape on this reed is the tip, really. So I'm going to try to do this so you can actually see, but I'm kind of working around a camera. All right. I'm just going to start on the very top of the tip. These are very, very light scrapes. I'm really not even putting any downward pressure onto the reed. It's just really the weight of the knife that's taking cane off. Next thing I'm going to do is clear out more cane on the tip. So the crow is actually a little bit higher than it was when I started. Scraping cane off makes the pitch go down, but if you can scrape the cane off in a way that makes the opening smaller, then the pitch will tend to go up. So, so far today, I've taken cane off the very top of the tip, and then I went around and did a little bit off the top half of the tip on all four sides, all four quadrants, I should say. And now I'm going to go down to the bottom of the tip where the heart meets the tip and just clear out a little bit more cane. So right now my scraping is maybe a little bit sloppier than usual, and that's because I'm using the video camera uh, to look at the reed, so I'm not actually looking at the reed directly, I'm looking at it through the lens, but hopefully this thing will work. So there are no lows to the crow right now, but the pitch is still good, so I'm actually going to hack a little bit of cane off the windows to try to get the lows into the crow. Okay, so the crow has a little bit more depth to it, I would say, but there's still no lows to it, and I think that's because the vibrations are just stopping the tip. So what I'm going to do is just scrape the very top of the heart right where the blend is, and if I only scrape the very top of the heart, like if I were to take scrapes out of the entire heart, it would make the pitch go down a lot quicker than if you only 
take scrapes out of the very top. But I think that's all that we really need. And I was wrong. Let's take a little bit more out with the rest of the heart. Okay, now we're starting to get some lows. Okay, I admit I had to do a little bit of scraping off camera just so I can get a better look at it. So I, I took more out of the base of the tip, made that a little bit thinner, and then I'm going to clip it now. Almost have a finished read. Um, I think the last two things I'm going to do is, and this is actually just for the tone quality. The tone's a little bit rough around the edges for my taste. I don't know how well that's going to come out through the uh, recording, but I'm going to take a little bit of can off the very top of the tip for the tone, and then I'm going to take a little bit out of the windows, and then I think this one will be done. Basically working on the sides of the very top of the tip and not scraping right down the middle of the top of the tip. So I think scraping on the very top of the tip made the tone a little bit smoother and a little bit darker actually. And that's because your ear really responds to the very attack, initial attack of every note that you play. If you have a very smooth attack to all your notes, then you're gonna have it sound like you have a very smooth tone quality. Alright, number two. Here's number one for comparison. So these look very similar. Once again, the only thing I really have to work with on this one is dusting off a little bit more in the heart in the back, but really I'm just gonna be focusing on scraping more out of the tip. Okay, so there's some bark left in the middle of the heart. I'm just gonna dust that off first. And I'm going to be taking this can out of the windows anyway, so I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and do it now. I usually don't like to wait to scrape the windows like a lot of people do, but I know I'm going to take out the can anyway. So I think the heart actually serves a much more important function than just the tone quality. I really think it adds a lot of restraint to the reed, and that kind of restraint gives you a lot of control. I think that actually contributes to, yeah, it contributes to your tone quality a lot, but but it contributes to your response and making sure you don't sound too blatty basically when you play, which would be no good. Okay, same thing with the last one. I'm going to start, start with just the very top of the tip and take these very short scrapes out.
Normally when I do this, the top of the tip will start to fray a little bit. Well, yeah, it did a little bit here. And I usually don't worry about that too, too much, especially if it's about two millimeters longer than what I'm going to finish the reed at, because I'll cut it off anyway. But if you can avoid having a fray at the top, that's probably better. So basically my knife is sharp enough that I'm only using the weight of the knife to press down on the reed. I'm not actively pressing down on the reed at all. There's no tension in my wrist or my hand. And so luckily this knife is sharp enough that I can just let the weight of the knife do all the work. And this is just a feature knife, so it's not even a heavy knife. Okay, I'm going to move a little bit lower. Yeah, I'm going to clip that portion off anyway, but I should try to make sure it doesn't get too much slower. Right up here. Yeah, this side of the tip got a little bit messy and a little sloppy, so I'm going to try to smooth that over and even it out a little bit. Okay, it responds a lot quicker, it's flat and a little stuffy, so the vibrations are not are kind of just stopping at the tip, they're not going all the way down to the heart in the window, so first I'm just going to clip it, we'll get the pitch up. Starting to get some lows in the crows, but I want the vibrations to go from the tip to the heart, so I'm just going to scrape off the very top of the heart a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. So I'm going to strip a little bit more out of the entire heart now. Just a hair. Alright. So right now this reed feels a little bit too closed for me. So there's two things I can do about that. If I scrape more out of the windows and basically dig into the windows, it'll actually make the reed feel more open when you play notes. So that's good for fast articulated sections like, like the fast part of La Scala. La Scala or 
Mendelssohn 3. Also maybe add a little bit more separation between the tip and the heart, which will help with that too. And then the other thing I want to do is clip the reed to make it shorter. And that'll actually make the reed feel more open because, yeah, so because I have a reed that has a taper to it from the bark down to the top of the tip, there's a small diminuendo. If you can imagine just cutting a little bit off of this section, it'll leave you with a more open part of the reed. Hopefully that makes sense. First, I'm going to scrape a little bit more out of the windows, and I'm going to let the pitch go down a little bit so I can clip it up to pitch. And once again, this is just to make the opening feel a little bit more stable and more pronounced so I can do fast articulated sections. Still a little bit stuffy so I'm going to scrape a little bit out of the very bottom of the tip and I'm going to go a little bit closer to the middle but I'm still going to avoid scraping down the exact middle of the tip. I kind of want to leave a spine going up the tip but if I can clear out just a little bit more cane then I think it'll be a little bit easier to play. Okay, so the lows are coming a lot more easily now. Now I'm going to clip it. Okay, so it plays... I'm still not in love with this read. I don't know how the recording quality is going to come out. It might sound the exact same as the last one, but it, it doesn't quite play quite as easily. And what I notice is that this read is about a full millimeter longer than I usually make them. So I'm actually just going to clip that portion off and kind of start over a little bit. Probably should have done this in the first place. Okay, because I clipped a lot off, I'm going to have to scrape the very top of the tip a little bit more. So I like having some guideline measurements, basically approximate measurements that I go by. So I usually make my reads between 69 and 70 millimeters long. I know the heart's usually going to be about 40 hundredths of a millimeter thick. I know the back's going to be about 30 hundredths of a millimeter thick. And it's going to vary a little bit by um, read to read, but really, I notice it doesn't really vary all that much. So if something's wildly off, then you know exactly what to do. So this three was a millimeter or longer than I usually make them, so that's what I look at.
So looking at this through the camera, I don't really notice it quite as much as I do when I'm looking at it in front of me. The top of the heart's actually a little bit thicker than I normally leave it. It looks pretty smooth through the camera lens, though. But I'm going to take a little bit more off the heart. And I'm just brushing off a little extra cane wherever I see it. Okay. Okay, to make it articulate a little bit more easily in the lower register, I'm going to take a little bit more out of sort of the bottom of the heart. You've got to be careful because this will make the reed go flat very quickly. And I also noticed a little bit of extra cane at the very bottom of the window, so I'm going to scrape that out a little bit. So I'm still leaving about... Now oh, that looks like two millimeters of bark at the very bottom of the reed. I should really just put it away for now, but I'm going to fuss a little bit more, work on the blend of the reed, so that's the very top of the heart and the bottom of the tip. I still feel a little bit of extra cane and a little bit of extra resistance coming from there. And then I'm putting this thing away. Okay, it's a working read. It's not my favorite read in the world, but yeah, it works. Okay, number three. Okay, the back and the heart is already very well scraped out. I don't want to touch that at all right now. So yeah, just going to work on the tip exactly the same way as we did the first two.
Okay, scrape the very top of the tip. Now I'm going to go down about halfway. And scrape up and out. And now the bottom of the tip. Okay, so the opening on this one is very small for me, but yeah, I'm just going to take a pretty good clip off the top. Let me go ahead and measure it now. Yeah, about seventy and a half. Let's just see how it works. Okay, I just kind of pinched it open a little bit with my fingers like that. It's actually starting to work a little bit better now. Okay, because I clipped off so much, I'm going to take a little bit more off the very top of the tip. So on the next read, I'm going to make sure I measure it before I do anything, because I don't want to do all this extra work and have to clip off. Some extra cane at the very bottom of the heart. I'm gonna scrape that off. Hopefully, that adds a little bit more res restraint to the response. Because right now it's responding just a little bit too freely for me. Okay, last thing I do before I try it, I'm going to scrape just a little bit of the bottom corners of the tip.
All right, I like it. If I do anything to it tomorrow, I might have to clip the tip a little bit, and I'm going to do it at a pretty steep angle. That'll keep the reed from um, vibrating a little bit too freely and make it a little bit more controlled and more restrained. But overall, the tone's really nice. Okay, read number four. It's a little too open at the top, and it's growing pretty flat, but once again, like the other ones, I think if I just keep striking the tip, it's going to close up and make the pitch go up. I'm really just trying to adjust the response, and not necessarily to make the response easier, but really to make it sound controlled with a little bit of restraint. So they still respond easily, it's just with some amount of cushion, as a lot of people will say. And I think that contributes more to your tone quality than thinking about if this reads brighter or darker. Also a sharp knife helps, as always. So this is going to get really boring because it's going to be the exact same thing as the previous three reads. I'm just going to scrape more off the top of the tip and then work my way down. I'm going to try not to make the same mistake as I did on the last two. I'm going to measure the whole reed and just see just how much I need to clip off. Once again, I'm not shooting for a very, very specific number in terms of total length, but it should be close. I know these reeds are not going to work if they're 71 millimeters long, but if they're somewhere between, let's say, 69 and 70, then should be close enough. Now, when I'm using a different shaper tip, a uh, Gilbert 1 shaper tip, then I actually do finish my reeds at around 71 or 72 even, and I tie them on longer, but that's a wider shaper tip, and generally with the wider shaper tip, you're going to want to make a longer reed. Okay, it's very flat and buzzy, but that's an easy thing to fix. Just gonna clip it. That's a good thing to read a little bit too long right now, so we have room to work with. And I'm gonna measure it. Okay. It's almost the right length, and it's a little bit flat, so. I'm going to clip it a little bit more. A little more yet. Okay, so this read might be really hard to get up to pitch, so I made the heart a little bit too short on this read, it looks like. And the windows are a little bit too far up. So that's going to be hard to really fix and overcome, but if I take a, lot, a little bit more cane out of the tip, it might help close the reed up a little bit. Oh, 
also going to try to take a little bit more cane out of the very sides of the tip. Hopefully this will help keep the pitch up. Okay, it doesn't sound that bad right now, but really it's going to be just too open for me. And that's because I took too much cane out of the very, or I moved the windows up a little bit too far. So, I ended up taking more cane out of where the heart would normally be, so that makes the reed go flat. It's still just vibrating in the tip more than I want it to, so I'm going to take a little bit of cane out of the very top of the heart. I'm going to avoid doing too much because it's already leaning towards being flat. And you can also try the trick where you set the overlap a little bit more by shifting the blades over to the right. It's playing a lot better already. I'm just going to take one more small clip and I'm probably just going to put it away. So this reed had one big problem with, I don't know if you can really see it through the camera, well it had that big problem with where the windows are and I can't move them lower at this point so I basically just salvaged this reed into something usable. I still would not feel terribly comfortable playing a full concert on this thing because it could easily swell up and the opening could get too big, but certainly a very nice sounding practice reed. Last one, you can see the tips a little bit better scraped out on this one. So right now, it's only vibrating in the tip, so you don't hear any crow or any lows in the crow. So to fix that, I'm going to scrape a little bit out of the very top of the heart, just a little bit though. Actually, it doesn't look like it really needs that. Try just a little bit here, and then I'm going to try scraping out the back, let's see how that looks. Oh. 
If, you, if your knife is really sharp, you don't really need the plaque in to scrape out of the back or the heart. Even the tip you can scrape out a little bit if you have, if you have a really sharp knife. Okay, I'm going to try clipping it. Alright, I'm just going to scrape the very top of the tip on this one, and maybe the bottom corners, and I think it should be basically done after that. Now this one dried out a little bit, so... Um, I think that's accounting for some of the problems that it's having. So I did chip that corner there. I really don't think it's that big of a deal, to be honest. I'm going to clip a lot of that off anyway, but even if it finishes with a small chip in the top corner, I don't really think it makes that big of a difference. Personal opinion, at least. I think one thing you have to be careful about when you're making reads is that it's very easy to care about the things that you can easily see. So if you easily see that there's a chip in the top corner, you want to say, oh, that must be the problem with it. When in fact, it's really just the easiest thing to see. But I think things like internal dimensions of the reed and how much volume is on the inside and where it's vibrating, those things we can't really measure and we can't really see, but I think they're much more important than caring about maybe a small little nick in the top corner. It's a little flat. I'm going to clip it. I don't really hear any lows to the crow, but I think that's really just because it dried out. dry read it responds and plays really nicely um, I'm just gonna take a little bit out of the windows and I'm probably just gonna put it away Plays. So, with all these reads that I've made, let's get them all here. So, with all these reads I made, they all basically had the same issue. The heart was already basically all scraped out, the back was already scraped out. I really just had to work on the tip on each of these when we find that up, and I think that just makes working on these reads a lot easier, and it makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot your problems if you know it's just one area of the reed that you need to scrape more out. So I think all but one of these reeds I could potentially use in the concert. This one that had the slightly too big op too big of an opening because the windows were too high up. It'll be a good practice reed. I don't necessarily see myself using this in a performance unless something amazing happens to it. But right now these are all playable reeds. I wouldn't say that right now any of them are particularly great but they're all brand new still 
I've only been working on them for, they're only two days old, basically. So they'll break in, and there's still a little bit of cane left that I could fuss with them a little bit more if I wanted to. But a lot of them should be in good shape. 